All right, guys. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Taza Podcast, episode two. So, guys, like I said, this the goal of this podcast here is to explore different avenues to becoming a full-time professional grappler. Okay. How this came about, people would ask me, how do you do to s- switch to professional grappling? How do you do this full time? Um, what do I need to do? And the answer is there isn't one answer for this question, right? There are some underlying things you need to do that we're going to explore. But you can't copy exactly what someone does. As a matter of fact, you don't want to ever, in my opinion, compare yourself to someone too closely because usually that could have like some negative effects right you can end up like hurting yourself you know trying to you can use someone as an inspiration but to copy someone 100 percent, i don't think it's a good idea and today we have the honor <laughs> <laughs> why are you laughing man <laughs> no it's an honor yeah, yeah, it's an <laughs> <laughs> the honor of hosting second episode reese maurice La Fever. That's right. That's, that's how we pronounce your name. Yeah, yeah. La Fever. You know, La Fever. from Tennessee, it's not too big deal, but you know, La you probably you probably could pronounce it better than it's I a guess. French name. There's an extra letter. They that's messed right. it up. Yep. It's yeah. La Fever means the bean. The bean. <laughs> or La Fievre means the actual fever. We'll go with that. One. We'll go with that. That one sounds better to me. You prefer yeah. fever? Yeah, yeah. Maybe not the bean. Yeah. The Reese fever. Yeah. So Reese, you've been here in Austin for not even a year, huh? No, uh, I came down here in April, so I think it's been like nine, eight, nine months, probably. I think is how long I've been down here. Yeah, nine months, man. They fly by. Yeah. So let's give the listeners a very like brief summary about Reese. So you're born where are you born? Yeah, uh, born in Tennessee, West Tennessee, and then grew up my whole life in a small little town called Smithville, Tennessee, or in Middle Tennessee. And then, you know, uh, from early on, like kind of wrestled. My dad did jujitsu when he was young, put me in it when I was like around like 12 or so. From there, man, just like spent seven years training in Tennessee. And then now we're here. Pretty brief summary, but yeah. That's you about you it. started at seven? Uh, no, I trained for like seven years. So, but I started when I was like 12 ish. But Sick. like my dad kind of like would like teach us stuff like growing up, like, you know, how to do like basic arm bar or something mm-hmm. like that. And like as like we got older like i got into it and then like some of my siblings kind of got into it but not really i'm the only one that really like stuck with jujitsu so mm. but it was like something i really like to do so i like yeah it, i think i started when i was 12 it was 12 yeah. six so you, your dad did a bit of jujitsu as well uh yeah yeah when he was younger he was like you know just like stuff in a garage with some guys you know <laughs> the, the stuff that people did in like the 80s you know yeah yeah i don't know what what like when did jujitsu like start do you do you know does anybody know crystals do you know like what year i should know i should jiu-jitsu me, I've been started it's long enough i should know this My i don't bad. think there's like a i mean it's kind of like like had mm. to do a little bit with judo right yeah like so other martial arts yeah yeah so it's like mixed into i'll sharpen up my things. bjj history knowledge yeah 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 apologies to the listeners so would you say your dad was like a main source of inspiration growing up to get to get into the um to get into the martial arts oh yeah yeah i, I think so for sure um i mean yeah i've, I've always kind of liked roughhousing with like my brother and stuff like that so growing up we like always did that stuff and then my dad kind of like encouraged it so it was pretty nice you know just beating up on each other and it being okay uh, <laughs> but i was amazing. always the younger brother so i always got beat up uh, and then, so he was like, as we got older, he would like show us some stuff and then he put us in jujitsu. And so it was like really cool. Cause it was something we could like relate to, to where like he enjoyed it and we enjoyed it. So it was, it was pretty cool. I fucking love your dad already, man. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met my dad? Yeah, no. He was at the Austin open. Were you there or no, which Austin open mm. the summer or the, uh, winter? yeah, yeah. The summer, the summer. No, Cause it was his past one. Summer. Actually I got, that's when I got COVID. Really? I was caught that, COVID that coming back. We were just talking about it. Mm-hmm. Coming back from Vegas, I caught it. And then I was, I mean, <clears throat> the symptoms had gone away, but anytime I would, I would test, I was still, um, stuck still, with you for yes, a while. Yes, it stays with you for a while. So you don't want to go around passing yeah. it, giving it to people. Um, so Smithville, Tennessee. Yeah. What was the scene like when you, when you first started? So there actually wasn't any jujitsu there. 
Uh, that's just where I grew up. It was the closest gym was 30 minutes away in another little little town. So my town had about like 5,000 people in it growing up. Mm-hmm. Like that, that was it. So it was really small, like, you know, maybe three red lights. This town had three. like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God. This, um. <laughs> this town maybe had like four red lights. So it was a little bit bigger, you know. That's insane, um, but it was, it was still pretty small too. And it was just this guy who's like trying to become a police officer. Um, I, I don't know if he still trains anymore or not, but uh, he was like, he kind of started a gym, but he wanted to become a police officer. So that gym ended up closing down, but I spent maybe like six or seven months training there. And then, like, we actually, like, bought some mats from that guy and brought him back to my house. So, like, my dad and me would, like, you know, we'd, like, do some stuff. And, like, I had a little sister who would, like, try and beat me up on the mats, too. So, it's, that's it's, sick. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You have a lot of siblings? Uh, I have three siblings. Sick. I have three. Yeah, yeah. T- two that, like, mainly grew up with me. And then one that was, well, like, half-sister. So, she was, like, there for sometimes, but sometimes she was gone, too. So. Sick. And you fought with all of them? Oh, yeah. All of them. All, well, I wouldn't say I fought. They more like they all beat me up, you know? I was I was just, just a wuss kid, man. I, I yeah. honestly was. Yeah, I was so bad. I was so bad. You're just, the youngest one? No, not even. No, I had a younger sister, but she was just mean, man. She was just evil. You're a sweetheart. <laughs> That's why, yeah. man. That's amazing. Yeah. So you went from, from training in this little gym. Now you train yeah. at home until, like, about when did you, like, get yeah, into, so like, I an think, actual gym? Yeah, so there was another gym, and it was, like, an hour away. So we would drive from this small town about an hour to go train at a bigger gym, which is the uh, Jiu-Jitsu Nation, or One Nation Jiu-Jitsu now, which is where, like, Giovanni and Cliff and all those guys are at. Okay, yeah, all those dudes who were, man, like, I think without them, I probably wouldn't be here today, you know? So, Not I mean, sure. it's like, dude, like, those guys were definitely, like, I mean, I trained there for, like, I, so I moved from a small gym, I moved to that gym, and then, like, I ended up moving down there. So it was, like, an hour drive for maybe the first, like, six months or a year. It was, like, an hour drive back and forth. My parents would, like, I'd finish school up there, mm. and then my parents would get off work, drive from Nashville all the way out to Smithville, like, an hour away, and they drive an hour basically back oh, shit. to let me train, and they drive an hour back. So it's, like, at least, like, a four-hour commute a day shit. for them. So, yeah, so shit. it was, like, without them, it was definitely a lot to do with them and stuff so like that. So th- you're basically driving two hours a day to make it the training in a gym yep. where there's i can relate to that like yeah, when i yeah. mean no when i first started it was at tristar gym it was like i used to commute we have a lot more than four lights it's actually yeah. montreal is <laughs> a pretty big city yeah, yeah represent yeah. montreal my heart always <laughs> with you oh, yeah. um but then when i when i started training full time with um with under john we would do that same drive, man. Like so would we you got you went from Montreal to New York, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how far is that? That's a pretty big drive too, huh? It's a, if you're driving, it's a five-hour drive. If you're flying, it's a one-hour flight. <sighs> oh, wow. so you were flying. When when I started making yeah. that, that little <laughs> private money, yeah. you know, when I started yeah. making that. Yeah, I used to teach seminars in Europe too because, like, I mean, I didn't have a visa to make money here. And mm-hmm. then in Canada, like, I didn't have that many contacts at the time. So I'd go to Europe to teach make money and then sometimes like it would be just more practical to take a flight i was becoming a bit of a princess but at first (laughs) at first it was the bus man the greyhound bus and i would take like i said in the last in the previous yeah Yeah, yeah, the overnight bus the greyhound would like 11 you get on and then like you fall asleep you're in pain and then like you you know when there's like lights in your eyes that wake you up that's when we'd be driving by Times Square because that's where the buses would park it'd be in Port Authority it's Times Square but that's like Times Square like the the hype of the hype of New York and it's all hype by the way yeah 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 yeah. Times Square is all hype there's nothing like it's cool like yeah big lights big this big that but it's just packed for nothing, man. It's, yeah. this is cool. There's a lot of homeless people. It's so you're saying New York is just overrated? Like. No. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of things in New York I really like, man. Like the oh, okay. food, but not in Times Square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's so it's just New York in general that you like. Not like New the York is big, nice. the touristy spots. New, it's just a little overhyped. New York is nice, I get man. You. I it's, get a you. nice I get it's a nice place. I like it. Um, I, miss, I miss it, of course. Obviously, here is a little bit different. Yep. But... Yep. I think it's easier. I think honestly, for like what what we're doing, like training and like for you, like to be able to move in New York would have yeah, been a yeah. little bit harder. Yep. Because yep. it's more expensive. There's, I mean, you'd probably have to commute around, which is not bad. But like now you're taking trains. Now trains are delayed. This and that. Yeah. yeah. 
but be different complications you can have problem with your car there's no perfect scenario i just think in texas it's more ideal for people that are like on the come up you know on the grind that don't have the money you know like yeah if you're yeah, george yeah. st pierre <coughs> flying in you have a helicopter that lands you <laughs> i land in the in the Times square i come down in the parachute and then i go to training <laughs> Easy work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't all yeah. have the, the, the luxuries. Yeah, yeah, you know for I mean? sure, for sure. So, yeah, we used to take that, that hour drive. I'd get in with, with Gary. We, he had the Red Rocket at the time. He had, like, a shitty car that still worked, but there was a lot of uh, – it had a lot of history. We'd pack that car, my friend. We'd be three in the back driving one hour. Nice. More sometimes, one hour and a half, depending on the – because we're, we're going we're going through the tunnel, like Lincoln Tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. But yeah, those are sacrifices you need to do. So I can, I can, I can relate to that. That's pretty cool. And then, okay, so up until what age were you, were you doing this two hours a day? I want to say so. um, So I want to say it was probably until about like. So I think I started when I was twelve. So maybe like, I want to say a year, maybe two. So like thirteen, fourteen is probably when I we when me and my dad finally moved down and we moved like five minutes from the gym. So you talk about like people being spoiled and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, it was like went from driving an hour to like being five minutes from the gym. It's nice. So like any, any drive that's like longer than like 30 minutes to go train seems so long now. Yeah. But like at the same time, I still get it, you know, still got to do what you got to do. But um, at first it's not that hard. I feel to make yeah. those sacrifices. I'm saying, no, you yeah, have no, to keep at first for sure. For sure. I get it. You yep. got to keep yep. making those, those little sacrifices. I feel it. But, uh, okay. So 13, 14, now you're moved in. You're a little bit closer to, yep. to the yep. gym. Yep. Kind got to know everybody and stuff like that at that point and it was like uh they did like a summer camp too so i would literally just spend like the whole day there at the gym and then just like just kind of hang out and just with everybody and we'd like train like two three times a day you know and just we'd have like drilling sessions for like some of the like older kids and stuff like that so it was was really cool because it was like there's a small group of kids that were like like that kind of are the reason that I wanted to do, like, I saw what they were doing, you know, they were like, a, like they had a couple kids or like some pans mm-hmm. champs, kids pans champs, stuff like that. I was like, yeah, yeah I want to do that. And Sick. so, uh, so yeah, it was pretty cool getting to like be around those guys the whole time. Kids pans. Yeah, man. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't, I, I, I didn't get that source of inspiration. Me it was, yeah. it was different. Man. Uh, so you do compete at that age? Uh, yeah, I, I actually went to kids pans once. Uh, I got, I had this kid jump close guard on me and just immediately triangle me. So I was like, oh, yeah, that was, that was fun. Uh, just go out there to California. And actually, it was, like, it was the worst experience ever. Like the night before, I just ate like a massive burger and like a milkshake and stuff. And I was overweight. <laughs> I was overweight by like two pounds. And so I had to go back to the hotel and I'm just like sitting in the shower for like three hours. Shower? Yeah. You yeah, it was, yeah, it wasn't a bath. It was like just a stand-up shower. So I just had to sit down in the shower and just... Just sit there. You yeah. blasted the water at max, yep. and then Tried you wore to. clothes yep. in the shower. Yep. As a kid. As a kid. As a kid. Yeah. Oh but I mean, God, it was man. it was pretty rough. And then it was like my dad wasn't too happy with me either about that because you know we like went to California. It's the biggest show. I just decided to eat a massive burger and milkshake to be overweight. So. But wait, how how did you? Uh, you were at what age at that at uh, that time? I was like fourteen. I was like fourteen. So old enough that I probably should have known better, but not old enough to be like to like actually consider just to be like ah yeah it'll be fine at that age but, man, yeah. you can you're like uh you're eating whatever and it goes right through you huh you don't even yeah. think about these yeah. things 14 yeah i mean i made weight so it wasn't too bad but That's you know crazy. now when got triangled from close guards <laughs> but those experiences man those are like those are the ones that will yeah. stick with yeah. you and then will push you and then will like keep keep ins- motivating you to you know continue yeah. and do all those things yeah so when did you find out about like the the so you moved made the move here yeah, well, yeah now you're how old are you now i'm 20. now so, you're 20 yeah, so there's yeah. five more years you're, you're yeah. doing all your things in nashville you're competing yeah. in nashville locally you're, you're starting to grow up a little bit you're yeah, becoming yeah. more of a man you yeah, know what i mean yeah, working on it yeah i was for sure and, for and sure. then so so when do you find out about the the john about gordon and then when do you decide to make the move how did that happen yeah so i think it was like um man you know like you said i was like competing i was kind of like come try and come up in nashville be like a just get big locally first and then try and work my way up and i think i feel like it was probably around ebi it's the first time i watched 
one of the matches. It might have been, I forget which EBI it was, but I remember watching some of those early EBIs, and I was like, I was, I think I seen those guys. I was like, oh, man, yeah, those guys are pretty cool, but, like, I was still a kid, so I didn't pay much attention. Mm-hmm. And then I want to say it was probably, like, I think 2017 ADCC is probably when I started to pay, like, more attention. I seen, like, I think that's whenever Gordon, like, took gold or whatever at yeah. ADCC. And then, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he won his first ADCC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I started KG. seeing everybody. Yeah, I started seeing those guys. I was like, oh, snap. So I started trying to follow everybody and stuff like that watching like you and watching like everybody from the team yeah and i was like yeah and then so i was like i was like oh man and then my team uh i feel like my gym back home like one nation they were like they really wanted to like they were trying to like like keep up with the times and stuff like that you know Mm -hmm. they were constantly trying to change they know that it changes so they were trying to change with it and stuff so nice um so like they they actually bought like a bunch of instructional um uh, and they were just like, hey, you guys can watch these. So, like, we'll we'll get some of these instructionals for you, and you guys can watch them and stuff like that. So, Sick. yeah, so, like, I actually had, like, a routine where, like, I would come in. I think this is when I started, like, learning more about John and everybody and stuff like that, too. Because yeah. I would come in, I would sit, I would, like, every Sunday, I would watch, like, like, a section of the instructional, like, a volume one or whatever. I would watch the whole section, and I would take notes, and then, like, the whole week I would practice, and then next week, that Sunday, I would sit down, I would watch the next section, and then I would sit there, I'd do that. I'd just do that, like, and just finish instructions like that. So, yeah, I remember, man. I remember, John, when you first came in and I did a round with you and you, like, fucking caught me, like, in this, in this um, 80-20 position. I'm like, man, this guy's pretty good. He's like, yeah, this kid, he came in from Tennessee, in the, in, <laughs> from the middle of nowhere, apparently watched all the instructionals, and uh, now here he is. Very tough kid, very young, uh, good, tough kid. So that's sick, man. That access yeah, yeah. to the instructionals, that shit actually yeah. helps, huh? Yeah, it, it helped. It helped me a ton. I feel like, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it was obviously it's like trying to watch footage and stuff like that. But I feel like if you don't like actually like see the stuff, it's like it's if you don't know what they're doing, it's kind of hard to like yeah. see that. Once you like have an under like once you just watch like one or two instructionals, mm-hmm. though. I feel like you can start to kind of see some of the stuff that they're doing. Yeah. And then I feel like even then you're just scratching the surface, man. You can only pick up so much watching. If you look, here's the thing. I like to rewatch my matches like over and over and over again. And each time I watch it, I see something new because my understanding is I've, I've, I've made improvements. I've, I understand things better now. So yeah, I watch yeah. something I didn't see. Then John shows something and then Gordon will show something. And then like a month later, I'll rewatch it. I'm like, fuck this, 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 that, this, 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 that. Like, but that's a sign you're getting better. Yeah, that's good. So if you rewatch things, I always like. I always hear people saying, yeah, I hate watching my matches. But I think that's that discomfort is it's there for a reason because yeah, there's yeah. a lot of benefit to rewatching your match, especially yeah. the ones where you lose. Yeah. Even yeah. the ones where you win. I remember like, dude, I, like the year we were in Puerto Rico, I'd spent so much time on airplanes. I had all my matches <laughs> on my phone and I just rewatched them over and over and I come up with ideas and then yeah. I find there's a lot of benefit to it. So that's sick. You what instructional um what instructional help you out the most you think the first i remember the first one i watched was john's uh leg lock instructional so i watched that one and then i think i started watching so i watched that one and i started watching some of gordon's like Mm -hmm. guard ones and stuff like that Mm -hmm. getting into his leg positions and stuff like that and then that's when i really started to see like like huge growth in my jiu-jitsu um and just like kind of like talking with like giovanni stuff like that you know just talking about like Wait, because we would try and watch them like separately and then we'd come back together and be like, just talk about what we picked up, stuff mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. from each of the instructionals. And so it was really cool, man, because having somebody like that to like kind of shoot the shit with a little bit and you can kind of talk to them and just like progress that way. I feel like it was it was definitely huge for me. So that that was probably the, the first instruction I watched and like the stuff that helped me the most right there. Yeah, no, know? I mean, I can, I can tell you've done you've done your, your studying, man, just by training with you regularly. You're like the guy that I train. I, I try to train with you at least like one round, one round a day. Yeah, yeah I don't look forward to that round. Man, so. <laughs> it's fun. Like, come on, man. No, no, here. it's a fun round. It's a good round. It's a good round. It's good round. It's good round. It's like I have to be a little bit more accurate and I try not to muscle things, but you know, if now I have to, I have to kind of bully you man you have to <laughs> use my strength. Yeah. no do I, you, you feel you feel like I, I i use too much strength with you no 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 I, I don't feel like that honestly i just it's it's not even that because like most of the rounds we do are like typically it's like it's like leg entanglement rounds so it's like yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. like those rounds it's like it's hard to like muscle yeah to use a bunch of muscle in those rounds so it's like mm. just like like you you 
move through those positions so quickly. It's yeah. like you're attacking insides and you'll switch to the outside. Yeah. It's like as I'm going to address one, you're already changing to the next one. Yeah, man. It's annoying because like you get to like if I'm drilling it with you before a class, now you know exactly yeah. what <laughs> yeah. I have to think of yeah, something yeah, yeah. new to come up with. It's just like this. But this helps, man. This helps. Honestly, I feel like even like I was training with Ramiro yesterday and I know he's he's facing some uh, he's facing the guy that Giancarlo faced. Remember that um, that Enigma? Uh, J- What's his name again? JB? J- JB. Oh, uh, JB. is he fighting JB? Yeah, I yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Like, for example, and he's like, he's good. They're good with hand fighting. They work so much on hand fighting in, in, mm-hmm. in that gym. So, like, today, like, before class, I'm going to go and I'm going to, like, show him, bro, you're giving up too many underhooks. You need but then it's going to make him better and then it's going to give yeah, me yeah. a shittier yeah. time. But I feel like... <laughs> yeah. The next two three rounds gonna make me because I have to figure something. Right, I feel right. like that's how you got it. You gotta come into training and like try to try to let your teammate know what he can do to beat you up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then that's how you're gonna develop like a like a tough training. Yeah, game. yeah, no, that's that's for sure. So, okay, you grew up small town. Okay, you made the move, sacrifice. And th- by the way, that's pretty supportive, huh? To make the move from Smithsville, like little town, and he yeah. moved to Nashville. So yeah, so it was, was kind of like thirty minutes outside of Nashville. It wasn't like downtown. We were still like it's kind of funny because like my whole life, like I lived you know like small country farm place area with like nobody around, and then like we moved a little closer to the city, and then we moved to like uh, where where the gym was, which was like it was like a suburb, which is the first time I've lived with like in a suburb, and then it's like now I moved to Austin, now I'm living in an apartment. So the city's just slowly attracted me. It's slowly drawn yeah, me in. Man, you have to, so you yeah, have to. Yeah. but I think one day you you can take the boy out of Tennessee, oh, yeah. <laughs> but you can't take the Tennessee out of the boy. <laughs> I think once oh. you're all done, bro, you're going to head back to Tennessee, live on a farm, man. You're going to oh, yeah, have your bro. cows, oh, yeah, your yeah. chickens, <laughs> all that stuff. You're going to drink high octane milk. And <laughs> high octane milk? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Dude. Sick. So yeah. cool, man. Yeah. The city, I feel like you you have to, if you don't, if you're not a city person, but where you're, where you where your 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 inspiration is, where like the level up for you is is in the city, you gotta go to the city. Yeah, it no. is what it is. Now, was it? What did you notice the difference between the instructionals and when you came in and started learning live from John himself? Yeah, I mean, it's it's literally it's like I, it's like the instructionals, but just like every single time you go into a class, it's like it's because there's such a level of detail and stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. It's like man, like especially I think I came in when when there was like ADCC camp was starting to really like yeah, ramp start. Up. Yeah. It was starting to ramp up and oh. stuff and, or we were like just getting into it. And man, so like my first like three months of four months of training was like, that was my image of just like training. So it was just like, it was just super hard training, like almost every, every day. Yeah. And, and then like after ADCC camp, I was like, Oh snap. Everybody was like a bit more like relaxed and stuff like that. Yeah. Not, not like just super hard wrestling rounds mm-hmm. which, and like, Man, it was it was definitely like a big change between <laughs> between that and like the ADCC rounds that we'd been doing like the yeah. whole entire time I'd been training with everybody. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I was like, oh okay, so I I don't have to die every day, you know? No, so, yeah. no, no. You, I mean, yeah. listen, like, did you, you you said you're 21, right? You you're like you you're still Wolverine. Like you still oh, yeah. wake up oh, yeah. now. You still do you still do two sessions every day. You train every session, and you used to do three sessions. You used to go to Henzo's at night, no? Yeah, yeah. Bro, that's crazy. Like, yeah. I remember doing three sessions, maybe three. So, we'd have the morning session, mm-hmm. but it wasn't every day. Like, yeah. we had morning sessions at Henzo's. It was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We'd wake up at, like, five. You're still burping what you had the night before. Because <laughs> we'd be training at Brunswick at night. And then we'd wake oh, up, we'd yeah. go, so we'd do two sessions. Whoa, three times what was that at Brunswick? What was the time on that It's class? It's a... Um, that was Gary's gym mm-hmm. in New Jersey, and like we train like eight thirty to nine thirty. Oh snap! Yeah, and then waking back up at five, and then, and then going home, I guess too. Yeah, yeah. But it was really close to where we lived in. Oh, Jersey. okay, okay. But yeah. we did the three sessions, but not every day, man. That's crazy. Yeah, like you still yeah. have that Wolverine effect. That's good, yeah. man. Take advantage <laughs> yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can't, you can't be. You can't. I feel like I don't know, man. I'm speaking for me now. I'm like almost thirty. I used to do that stuff. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? I, I, I remember like we'd do three sessions. Then at night, I'd either like take the train to the Bronx because John would teach like on Monday nights. Or I'd go to Brooklyn, train with like JC and those guys. Or I'd go to Long Island, train with Jason Rao and those guys. Yeah, yeah. 
but it wasn't every day three sessions and then like you have to like come down come back up come down come back up so that's pretty crazy but yeah of course it's it's gonna it's gonna be like that you know it can yeah, it yeah, can yeah. you gotta fluctuate a bit the intensity i feel like even even the, the best guys you look at, and i remember like i remember when we were in puerto rico um i trained with nikki ryan a lot because he was like my size yeah and i tried to train with him every day and then sometimes he'd be like no you know but he's smart he told me like bro like he told me one day on, on the ride back he's like you can't train hard every day yeah like yeah. not train you can't have wars every day where it's like head to head and like yeah talk. yeah because yeah. we're gonna happen you're not gonna like try new things you know you're not gonna be able to try new skills and then like how are you gonna have the confidence to try it when it when it really matters right. and john, john has said the same thing yeah yeah, like yeah gordon has sure. told me the same thing of course but yeah so you noticed a cool difference between instructionals and then real life real life teaching yeah yeah for sure and you you think like you i mean it's the same amount of detail but it's just different the way it's structured and it's presented to you. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. when there's like a goal in mind, like the, a team goal, like, okay, we have this competition coming up. This is how we're going to structure training. This is how we're going to structure rounds. Right. It makes a difference. Like the environment is also important. Yeah. I yeah. If like you're learning through an instruction, it's like, it's just the techniques and that's, yeah. that's about it. You know, there's no context. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There, there's like concepts and stuff like that, but it's like, um, there, yeah, like you said, there's no context, you know, it's like, it's like, there's like leading up to what event, yeah, yeah stuff like that, you exactly. know, exactly. it's, it's like, if you're studying like a leg lock instructional leading into like whatever event, you know, it's like, it's, or like if you're <laughs> studying like a leg lock instructional leading up to IBJJF event where like, at least for me, I, I couldn't do heel hooks, yeah. can't do any, anything except mm -hmm. for the Achilles lock. Achilles. So it's like. These are yeah. good, man. We've been uh, working uh, they're on they're pretty good, they're man. Good, they're pretty man. good, man. Yeah, like, tell yeah. me that that new Achilles that we've been working on is. It's it's a bit pressuring. Yeah, it's it's not the most fun thing to. get And it's crazy. Up. It's on YouTube for free. You can learn that shit on YouTube for free. I find that shit insane, man. Yep. So, Reese, let me tell you one thing, man. You became my favorite training partner for one reason and one reason only. <laughs> oh yeah. What do yeah. you think that reason is? The reason that I became your, I, I don't know. Go ahead. What, what? Take a wild guess. Man. A wild hey, guess. You, is your it, first guess, you're going to get it right. <laughs> I'm one of the smallest guys in the gym. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> because you have the most um, amount of uke miles. Oh, the uke miles. Yeah, yeah tell yeah. us about that. Yeah. Man. Tell oh, us man. about how, how, how did it happen? How you became so quickly John's favorite uh, uke? You know, what, you know what that life is like. I, tell us. I wish that I could tell you guys how that happened. Um, but I honestly have no idea <laughs> how I ended up in that position, but like, you know, it's just like one day just training. And then one day John's like, Hey, let me use you. I'm like, all right. I think cool. I know, but you, you, you know, when yeah. you moved in, did you, you used to go to Henzo's, no, you used to mm -hmm. have in the mornings or you went straight to Roco. How did it work out? Uh, you? no, I think, I think I trained and then, um, at Henzo's. yeah, I trained at Henzo's cause it was like, uh, so we moved here and then I think. I think the first couple of days we were just getting moved in or whatever. And then like one day I, I finally went to Henzo's and then, um, that class, um, I talked to John afterwards and that's, that's whenever he talked to me about going to Roka and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to Henzo's the morning session. I would still go on the weekends and stuff like that. To but Henzo's? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. To Henzo's on the weekends. RGA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, um, I, I wouldn't go like say like to the morning sessions during the week because we'd have the morning sessions yeah. at roca but like anytime mm -hmm. we wouldn't I, i'd go to henzo sessions and so. john was like hey man like <laughs> you look like a light body i can uh, i can uh, toss around a bit yeah <laughs> so if you guys don't understand what's happening okay is is a demo partner okay it's like who who you use to demonstrate technique on and it's a pretty nerve nerve testing thing yeah to it, be, can be. it can it be it can be sure, it can sure. be but yeah. you, you handle it very nicely man like it's you get it's used a, to it man you get used I, to I think you i don't used to it. i don't <laughs> I, not me <laughs> no man I don't the, the uk it. life isn't for everybody okay? it's not not, for everybody. not everybody has the same amount of miles they can put on yeah you. no you're <laughs> racking up those miles pretty good man you're racking up those miles pretty good <laughs> yeah yeah no, nah, yeah, no. I mean, it's, it's just a joke, but I, I, I think it's uh, everybody appreciates you big time for, for <laughs> being a big UK man. Yeah, you man. Know? You know, I did it. It is what it is, man. So somebody's got to take one for the team. So. <laughs> big one for the team, man. <laughs> All right, Reese. So you've been here nine months. Okay, you're living here. Is it the first time you make a big move away from the family? Obviously, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I moved down here when I was like 19, uh, back in April. So like, I, th I think it was like. Um, 
Oh, so you're 20, not 21. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, fuck. Yeah. I got that one wrong. You <laughs> said it on the wrong. podcast. It hasn't been now, and I got it wrong. It's, it's all good. It's you the know. coffee, by the way. It's, it is. It's, the coffee's pretty strong. Dude, it's it's kicking in. You know that experiment. A bit this is an experiment yeah. we're making, guys. We got we got Reese in the ice bath. That's right. It was, it was solid. It was a three minute ice, ice bath. bath at 45 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I made him a mocha pot triple exp- espresso shot. And then yeah. I don't know if you guys can tell, but we can probably sprint from here. To Zambia and back, <laughs> no problem. And then we can run on the ocean, no problem at all. 100%. I'd feel comfortable doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's do it. So <laughs> this is the first time you make a big move away from home? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was honestly, it was, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do this. I think 2021 in October is when I finally decided, like, I'm going to make this move. You know, I talked to, uh, at One Nation, I talked to the guys over there. I was like, I was like, listen, you know, I was like, this is what I'm thinking about doing. You know, I want to do this like full time. Yeah. Uh, and obviously they, they were, uh, they're super supportive, but obviously it's like, I'd been there for like seven years. You know, those guys are like close friends to me. Um, and so after that, it was like, it was, it was like, it was kind of bittersweet, you know, cause it was like, yeah, they sure. wanted to see me go, but at the same time, it's like, they're losing a friend and somebody that's been trained with them for it's years. Not easy, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But uh, but you know, I left on really good terms with them and stuff like that. Um, and it was it was really good, man. It was really good. Um, but moving down here, I think, like I said, in twenty twenty one October is when I decided I was gonna move down. I wanted to move down like immediately, like the next three days. I was like, yep, just gonna get my stuff, pack my car, and go. But uh, my dad was like, well, why don't you like save some money and maybe be smart about it, so that way yeah. when you get down there, you can actually like train how you want to, stuff like that. I was like, All right, I'll give you a shot. So, um, so you took his advice? Yeah, so I took his advice. Smart. I saved up. Um, me and my girlfriend, we got our first six months of rent covered. And then we decided, all right, now we're going to move. So we moved. And then I think West Coast Trials happened. Mm. And then that next weekend, I, we drove down here. So went did that. Um, Smart. Yeah, yeah. And then so we did that. And then it was, it was pretty good, man. It moved down. It was like not too bad of a drive. It was like 12 and a half hours. So it wasn't too bad. Crazy. Um, and then, yeah, that was like, so all my family's still back in Tennessee. So it's just me and my girlfriend here in Texas, which I don't know why she decides to move down here with me, but I guess she's just as crazy as that's, me. So that's a keeper, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's, she's awesome, man. She's you, awesome. You guys sure. have been together for how many years now? Oh, man. Uh, since I was like, 15 i think so Damn. yeah like five years five, five years, years yeah, and you're yeah. 20 that's crazy man yep, you yep. guys almost six a, years yeah dude, that's a pretty big milestone to move out because you probably weren't weren't living with her at the time you were living in with the fa- with the family yeah i was living with my dad then so Damn, yeah it's a big milestone yeah crazy yep. yeah it was definitely a lot of changes and stuff and she's had to get used to how ridiculously horrible of a human being i am but uh, mm-hmm. at least at home <laughs> so, at home huh yeah, yeah yeah let this hang around let this hang around <laughs> just tossing leave, stuff on the floor leave your yeah, dirty yeah, yeah. underwear here leave your <laughs> socks there yeah yeah like God. that I had to fix some habits you know some habits but uh but no it was, it was good man One once we got down here, like I said, at first I was, I was a little concerned. I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to make it, but you know, I mean, eight, nine months we've been here and starting to feel pretty comfortable. Things are starting to feel at home, getting to like know everybody in the mm-hmm. team and stuff like that. So yeah. it was, it was definitely like intimidating at first and just like going in there and training and just like getting beat up, you know, every day it's like, am I even supposed to be here? You know what I mean? And just like yeah, having so. those like doubts with myself, but yeah. Man, dude, it was, it was good, man. Everything's those, starting to work out for, for the right. Those doubts, by the way, they happen to everyone. And then this is like, I say like a checkpoint where a lot of people disappear and then some people stay. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? I'm not going to name names, but I remember like, because I would do the Montreal, New York trip yeah, quite often. Yeah. And then we'd have people get the shit kicked out. Like you described, you know, like yeah. just get beat up hard. You know what I mean? Like they... they like I, yeah. I would be in in like the car driving back to Jersey and be like, "What am I doing here? You know, <laughs> yeah. like I yeah. have yeah. no idea how how am I gonna be number one? Like yeah. how am I? Yeah. It's, it's those doubts you have to like just stick through it. It takes time, you know what yeah. I mean? It, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, yeah. that's crazy. So other than like the, the the technical aspect, that's something you kind of got over pretty quickly. Financial aspect, like how you how you able to manage now like on a regular basis for like people that are like listening yeah and like yeah. wondering how is re- well first you're you're american right so yeah, like yeah. You, you have like you have the right to work here you yep. have the yep, I got yeah i got yeah so if you're from from out of the u.s guys we'll have uh, we'll have an immigrant one day that, <laughs> that can that can give us insight maybe me but i'm not gonna have myself on the podcast that's yeah so how are you managing like how you because you train twice a day yeah every day sometimes three times on weekends 
but whatever you yeah, train yeah. you compete pretty often too yeah like, yeah trying to compete and stuff like that yeah you try to compete as much as you can mm-hmm. that's a good idea yep, especially yep. at like at, at like now like i don't think belts matter as much it doesn't matter actually the belt but like yeah just try to compete as much as possible i think it's it's a um it's very important like yeah, you get comfortable yeah. it becomes like second nature yeah so how are you managing you like finding a little work on this obviously money is not a priority right now for you just yeah, getting yeah. by and being able to train is is the priority right yeah yeah i think uh yeah as far <laughs> as stuff like that goes you know i mean obviously i'd like to have as much money as i can but, <laughs> but uh you know i mean it's it's i and I, I feel like i understand that it's i have long-term goals mm. and so like it's it's just a long-term plan you know it's mm-hmm. not it's just delayed gratification. Like I, I know it's eventually I will get there, mm. but it's just going to take time of mm-hmm. like right now. It's just taking time to do whatever I can, just like odd jobs, stuff like that. Like, mm. you know, doing like DoorDash, just simple, basic stuff, just yep. enough to pay the rent and like have yep. enough groceries to eat and stuff like that to get by. So. You're kind of your own boss, right? Yeah. So yeah. Someone- that's, that's super helpful, man. And that's really why I like it. It's just like, like, you know, you're like, whenever I have free time, I can go earn money. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much what I try to do. You know, in between classes, stuff like that. If I can go earn some money, that's, that's what I'll go do. Sick. Just as long as I can make enough to pay for rent and keep food on the table, then that's, that's really all I need at the moment right now. I mean, keep that hot chicken on the table. That's right. That Nashville hot chicken. That Nashville hot chicken. Hattie Bees. Yeah, you're talking shit about Hattie Bees, <laughs> yeah. man. Apparently, apparently it's not the, the thing though. Listen, what is it's, it? it's uh, I mean, listen, man, you know, I, I might've went there like once. It's, it was pretty it's good. Just, it's, it's all right. It's hot it's not chicken. Bad. It's not it's like, hot chicken. Yeah. yeah, but I'm yeah. sure there's hot more. chicken can only be like hot chicken. That's it. So it's much. not yeah. like it doesn't have the real like because you, you came from like a small town. So you guys probably oh, yeah. had like very traditional. It was, there is was, there was some good stuff. There's some good stuff. in small towns. Your, your parents good cook food. good. Your grandparents, they cook good. Like oh, yeah. you had family that oh, like really yeah, proper yeah, chefs yeah. and, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, I had some. Had, uh, I wouldn't say proper chefs, but I, but I don't think anything in the south is proper. By the way, <laughs> want some biscuits, boy? Want some biscuits, boy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tennessee stuff, man. Tennessee stuff. Some what? Like you have biscuits. What else? Yeah, biscuits and gravy, dude. You got dude. sausage, bacon, eggs. You got classic. Oh, bro, so good. So good. Just Basic. Like, I mean, simple things. Wake up, yeah. Have like, have like extra family over or something like that. You wake up and it's just like, got my mom in the kitchen. She's just cooking. Wake up to, you know, you wake up to the smell of like fresh breakfast, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Now you wake up to the smell of spats. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Spats, yeah, yeah. And knee pads and yeah, police sirens and stuff, man. I'm you not have used police, to the city. You have so. police sirens here? Yeah. I, yeah, I wake up to police sirens. What? Pretty, yeah, Where are you yeah. staying? Uh, it's like, dude, it's you know, it's like, it's like you're I mean, staying it's next to a police station. No, 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 no. no. Listen, listen. It's I haven't not, heard of it's not. It's not bro, that. Bad. Luckily, you're not living in New York, man. That shit becomes like you have to just become used to it. Yeah, and yeah, by New York, yeah. I mean like you can be anywhere in the city. It doesn't have to be Manhattan. It can be you can be in the Bronx. You can, especially in the Bronx, man. It, you, sirens is like background noise, man. Really? Yeah. See, I don't that. That's what I'm saying, man. I grew up in the country. Like you walk outside and you hear nothing. That's amazing. We used Stars, to have like yeah, you just see like deer and stuff outside all the time, Perfect. all the time. Perfect. But now it's just like man, I walk outside and there's like there's people. There's too many people. Too many people. I just need less people. You've been in New York before. No, I, I've been to I've been to Jersey a couple times. Um, I fought on. Um, actually, you know what? I actually fought on the same card as you one time. Shit. It was uh yeah it was you and John Carlo were on the same card. Um, it was uh I forget what the event name was. Um, uh, um Emerald. Yes, it was Emerald, Emerald City. City. Yeah, do you remember that event? I just I just knew you were gonna make a reference to somewhere on the East Coast, and yeah, yeah. the only time was, I was with John Carlo Emerald. Yeah. It was there. Say, I was there. Yeah. No way, man. I was at that event. Yeah, I had I had a I had a super fight on that uh, on that event. Like before I moved down here, or anything like that, dude. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I remember yeah, it was so cool because I was thinking about moving down here at the time, and I was I was like so awkward and stuff. I like I was like, oh man, should I go talk to him or should I just like? You should have, man. Kind of, I know I should have. I should have. But but you guys were like getting ready to compete. I was like, ah, oh, I'll just leave him alone, you know. No, man. Next time, just come right up. Oh, bro, I'm but sitting here are talking to you right now. What are you? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm not too uh, nervous. Don't to come talk up. Actually, anymore. now you're yeah. relieved. No. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, amazing. Man. You think people will be coming up to you at some point? You want that? No, no. Maybe, man. Maybe you want I, people to yeah. look up to you. No. Uh, Eventually, man. you want to like keep racking up wins, be an inspiration, the yeah, pride it, of it, Tennessee. Yeah, heck yeah, bro. Be be an inspiration for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got I got some like buddies back home and stuff like that. That have helped me and stuff so i think i think it'd be cool to just like 
like I definitely I don't want to suck you know so that's that's something I don't want to do but um I would definitely like to you know be able to actually like win some big stuff you know I mean I think the goal for everybody is obviously ADCC and stuff like yeah, that yeah you did for, pretty good for a lot of people yeah you did you did pretty good last year man you didn't you win no key pans all subs like yeah, all your ma- like yeah, combined time, time of like yeah. two minutes on the mats yeah it was uh I had one I had one match that it went pretty long but other than that man I, I actually felt dude I man I just felt really good that day you know just yeah. had a good day man had yeah. a good day was able to take the win at pan so Dude, honestly, the way I look at it is like it's it's a long run thing. You know, it's like a marathon. You you can't. But you seem like you have that. You have that like in your in your in your mind already. Yeah. And I feel like having these goals like ADCC and everything automatically you adjust your lifestyle to being disciplined, waking up, going to training, no distractions, yeah. Um, yeah. just being on the path like super straight. Um, think you're you already you already have that but yeah it's, it's a long-term thing and then you're gonna have ups and downs and then it's just about you know getting through the downs and then knowing that there is there's gonna be you know an, an up at some yeah, point at yeah. some point there's gonna be for an sure, up, man. for sure yeah. you know what I mean? so that's yeah. crazy have you ever been outside the country uh actually once actually yeah yeah i went on a, a jiu-jitsu cruise no yeah, 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 yeah. It was. Uh, I was like, it was actually when I first started. My dad was so excited that we were finally starting jujitsu. So there was like a bunch. They had like a couple um, world champions on there, or whatever. Um, I think it was like some Atos guys and a couple other guys on Trader. there. Trader. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, But yeah, man, it was like it was like my dad was like so excited. He's like, we're gonna go do this. You what know, so, uh, where, where was so it? We stopped in a couple. It was oh, a cruise. That's true, that's true, that's true. So we went to Jamaica, which was climbed a waterfall in Jamaica. That was pretty awesome. It was it was a little sketchy. You look up, see like massive spiders that are like just in the treetops and stuff, like giant yellow and black spiders. It's like, yeah, I'm just stay in the water, you'll be good. But what? Uh, yeah, yeah. It was, that was pretty crazy. My biggest like, fear, man, is like cockroaches, spiders, these things like that. Yeah. Not yeah. a fan of them. No, man. <laughs> no crawling little things. No, thank yeah, you. That's, that's fair enough. I, I get that. I get that. Yeah. But yeah, man, I think, uh, yeah, I think think that was, a, that's the only time I've been out of the country. Went to Jamaica, like, went to Mexico, um, like, Cayman Islands. But other than that, no, man, always stayed right here in good old USA. <laughs> USA. <laughs> you know, that's good. I mean, most most of the big comps are, are here now. Right? Yeah. So yeah. You, you probably now, like, what are we now in January? You're what's your what's mode like now? You're like full spring. You're getting ready for trials, obviously in yeah. October. Like you're you're already set out to, yeah. to do this competition. Yeah. That's what you you're looking yeah, that's, at right that's now. That's the goal for sure right now. It's obviously trials. Yeah, but um, just small stuff in between then. And I think um, mm-hmm. you know, we were talking about like financially making making ends meet and stuff like that. Yeah. So like doing small stuff like in between sessions and then like yeah. When I compete, sometimes I can like like the weekends are like the some of the biggest times to make money for me. So like I really like to do bet matches and stuff like that. And I've bet I help, I feel like doing bet matches like helps me boost my confidence because like, you know I'm I'm trusting in myself. You know it's like if you don't win. Respect, man. Yeah, yeah. What about what about teaching? Do you teach? Do you enjoy? Have you had? To, I mean, you went back to to Tennessee like. Mm, for christmas for the holidays yeah yeah did you teach while you're out there um i taught i taught a little bit i taught a little bit not not a ton but uh before like like at my old gym i would teach like kids classes every day too so it's like i was teaching like two kids classes and then training once in the morning training once at night mm-hmm. so um so it's like i taught a lot so like i'm actually pretty comfortable teaching Sick, um man. that's a yeah good way so to... just, yeah yeah so i feel i feel pretty comfortable like teaching but then obviously it's like you see like you see john teach and stuff like that it's like man just so it's like the way he can relay information is so much different than like yeah. anybody i've ever like yeah. learned from before mm-hmm. you know so it's like it's it's something that like it's a good aspiration to have is just to try and be like that but i definitely feel like i'm not like you know super awkward when i teach no depending on who i'm teaching you know if it's obviously like somebody that i respected like it's a little weird it just feels in weird in front to of me, someone yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. the yep. first time i taught a seminar at tristar and faras was oh, yeah. there bro it was like the first two techniques i i was like man i almost shot myself did you start at tristar that, yeah. that was your first gym. That's where I started the first first time. Nice. Yep. First started. We had uh, it was like in the GSP prime era. Like oh yeah. It was oh, wow. So we had. Well, we had. What some, year was that? Hmm? What year did you start then? Um, the first time I got exposed to jiu jitsu in 2012. Oh wow. Yeah. Then huh. I stopped for. I did like a couple of months. I stopped for like a year and a half. 
because I was just I didn't know what I wanted, what I wanted yeah, to do. Because yeah. I was doing a sport, I was trying to like re. I was doing soccer full time. Oh my yeah, life. you were big into soccer. Right? Yeah, big soccer boy, yeah. dude. It was like my life. It was like jujitsu for us now. Yeah, for, for, yeah that's yeah. what I mean. You, yeah. know, you said pants, kids. Me it was different. Me it was like indoor winter league. Oh, okay, uh, okay. So you grew up like playing soccer and stuff. Like, okay, okay. Yeah, knowing yeah. all the stats, all the players, their yeah, age, yeah. what shoes <laughs> they wore, who yeah, they were yeah. sponsored, yeah. everything. I watched every game, all the. Yeah, but then. You know, I, was, I wanted to, to try something different. And then TriStar was, like, pretty close. That mm-hmm. summer, I remember my family moved from, like, one town to another. And then it was, like, a bike ride away. So I decided oh, nice, to, yeah. you know, give it a try. Yeah, that's go to, that's Go to TriStar. Yeah. And uh, we had, like, remember when George was getting ready? Who was he trying to fight? It was Condit. Condit, was it? Let me remember. It was Condit. Who else could it be? No, it was Condit. Mm-hmm. There was Marillo Santana, Ryan Hall, oh, nice. Braulio Estima, all those. John would come in. Oh, wow. And I was boxing like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I remember See? being in the locker room, Marillo, like, <laughs> dropping his bag, making eye contact. I was rapping my hands. I'm like, yeah, fuck that ground ground shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just like, all these great guys are coming in, and you're just sitting there wrapping your hands. Yeah, I was, I was boxing. Yeah, I remember yeah. boxing. I remember hitting the bag, and these guys were having crazy sessions. And, like, they'd have, like, pro grappling class, and they would, it would be really back, back, back. yeah and i was i was boxing it's like yeah. so when i think back i was like man like that could have been that could have been a good first uh first exposure to like some yeah. very high level but it, at tristar it was a lot of high level it was yeah, mma yeah. guys yeah. mma guys are usually super tough yeah yeah they're super tough like when you're training with mma guys different than training with like pure jiu-jitsu guys that yep. like except yep. bottom position like you know the scrimmaging we do for adcc how tiring mm-hmm. it is it, it's that, it's like that the whole it's time it's that yeah. plus a little bit more yeah 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 because they just never accept bottom position yeah yeah but yep. um what's it called teaching like here's what i do sometimes you, you when i miss morning session i come up to you and i'm like what do we do I always come up to you and ask yep. you, like, what yep. do we do? This is like this is like teaching, basically. Yeah, yeah I've heard that question this, quite a few times. Yeah, for me. Quite a few <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you trying to say, man? No, no, <laughs> man. I, I love sharing that. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, that's... man, I'm slacking. Fuck. But, um, no, I think teaching is, is for us, like, f- because, like I said, like, some people may tr- be trying to figure out how I can, I can make ends meet and then, like, become, like, more of a full-time practitioner i think teaching is a good good avenue you know yeah yeah making money and everything and um i think what what would be cool is to see you elevate the level back home yeah yeah no that's that's definitely you're already doing it though no yeah 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 for sure so like uh, anytime i go back home i typically i'll train with like the one nation guys and then um also have uh like my sponsors who help me out too. That's that's also like like as far as traveling and stuff like that. My sponsors are like super helpful. The Perfectus guys, which it's actually cool because like yeah. growing up, like uh, the One Nation gym, the gym that I was under, and mm. like Perfectus, they, they were like two separate gyms, but they were like under the same affiliation. It was uh, it was the Luis Pajares affiliation. Luis Pajares. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, which he, he has a son Pedro Pajares, which he's he's he was actually he competed quite a bit at black belt and stuff like that. Um, but, but he, they did really well and stuff like that. So they're all under the same affiliation. They're like 30 minutes away from each Mm -hmm. other. So, um, so just like whenever I left, you know, the perfectus guys, they're trying to like start a brand and stuff Mm -hmm. like a clothing brand. And so it's, it's, um, they, they obviously they wanted to help me like however they could and stuff like that. So it it was pretty cool because they're able to sponsor me and I'm also able to like help them get the brand out there and stuff like that. So yeah, man. And and I've like known them for like my whole life pretty much too. So for my whole jujitsu career anyway. So yeah. Yeah. So I think that helps with travel and stuff like that too. For sure. And I think it's smart. What you did is stick with like a local brand. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that's huge, man. Like, I mean, for, for people coming up, like they're going to want to like, represent same thing i feel like it helps if you're not sure where to get your help from local you know people that are within your community that that can that can really help boost your um boost your like just support you know people behind you and and helping you and then i'm sure when you go back there you can go back and drop some knowledge people are excited to see you people are excited to train with you People want to test themselves against you. I'm not sure that's something I appreciate. You know, like going <laughs> yeah. back to places, people are trying to like go crazy and like see, hey, hey how am I gonna do with this guy? Now he's been training in that room for a amount of yeah, time. Man, yeah, yeah. How do you sure. deal with that? Oh man, you know, I mean, as far as uh, as Canada. far as stuff like that, it's always real friendly. You know, I mean, like it's there's it's um 
the jiu-jitsu scene in like in tennessee in general is it's 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 pretty good size there, there's also a pretty good jiu-jitsu scene out there mm-hmm. um uh and so like anytime i go train with those guys you know I always try and like just like help them out however i can and stuff like that um and just like like you said kind of like get like help elevate the game and stuff like that mm-hmm. so um just doing whatever i can for them and as far as people like test themselves against me typically the people that try and do that are like are like some of the kids that I would train with or like some of the kids that I would teach Damn. are now growing up. Like there's this one kid who he'll message me on Instagram all the time. Like, uh, <laughs> I used to teach this kid, man. He was like, he's like nine years old. Uh, now he's growing up. He's getting big, man. He's like about my size now. He's like, oh, he's shit. like, he messaged me. He's like, yeah. He's like, I see you're competing. He's like, I'd still beat you up. Though. I'm like, all right, Damn, just wait till yeah. I come back. Just wait till I come back. Mm, he's so, eating yeah, more biscuits and gravy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He's, he's, not, he's, <laughs> he's trying to, man. They're trying to. So yeah. Any, anytime I go back, I got, got, kids try and murder me now so. that's crazy bro yeah, honestly but. like um that's so funny when you came in last after west coast trials mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure you were the youngest guy i'm like oh these fucking kids coming in <laughs> you know, this yeah. new generation <laughs> yeah. of kids and now a couple of months later you're 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 a veteran in here man now you're like oh, an yeah. old guy <laughs> we have 15 16 dude, year olds man dude. they come in with their parents i'm like what is this daycare man what the <laughs> fuck you know what i dude, mean it really is man it really yeah, is it's like, like you're not even the youngest guy yeah, anymore, i know man. Yeah, i know and that's you're fucking you're still like a little dude, bambino you know you still yeah, dude <laughs> yeah. eight nine months man you got some new like some new wrinkles and stuff yeah it's, yeah it's yeah, all yeah, over my face yeah, yeah. 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 that that room ages you quick man yeah man yeah bro yeah but no dude there's one point where there's like three kids that were like like at least like 17 and under in the room and now it's like that like almost every day you know it's, <laughs> it's crazy like, yeah it's yeah crazy. there's, like, there's a guys, lot of young kids in there new sure. wave really like they, they yeah then john <laughs> picked the name <laughs> yeah. or gordon whoever they picked that name perfectly just yeah yeah me i'm already on the shore dried up my friend <laughs> me that wave <laughs> that wave is crusted up i'm like becoming sea moss on the rocks man yeah you know anytime I mean? you post you just gotta post previous wave just previous wave <laughs> me, I'm, I'm like the old wave i'm the fossil you know what i mean I'm <laughs> <coughs> oh man trying to kill me bro yeah <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, man. it's a blessing and a curse having you guys because what I try to do is I try to keep up, man. I try yeah, to keep yeah. up the intensity. I try to keep up like the frequency of training and I try to keep it. Even like I say, even when I was like 10 years ago, your age, yeah. I didn't have that volume of training. It would be three times, maybe once or twice a week because yeah, you're doing yeah. it every day. That is crazy, man. Yeah. And then you don't even like, I don't like us except for today, like you're doing any like things to help you recover like i see you sitting in that uh, in the, <laughs> what is it called the lotus pose before class and you guys bro. don't even i need to warm up for like an hour you man. just listen no bro no anytime you need to warm up listen I, the best way to warm up you just just posture up you just hit that turn hit that oh, turn oh, tuck, you get tuck. like one pop one pop two two tuck, tucks you know you're good you're, you're good. back in the yeah, place yeah, that's man. right you can just start training that's it's a blessing and a curse having you guys in here man but it's more it's honestly humbling because like time obviously time yeah, is yeah. a thing it's humbling me it's like fuck man i'm becoming like this 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 old uh this old boy in like compared to like the whole room i'm probably one of the oldest guys in there man how old are you 29 29 i'm gonna be 30 in july you still got time though no still, i have still time. Quite john, a bit of john time, honestly yeah. and, and i and i agree with him i th- he, he says grapplers peak at mid 30 because it's different hmm. kind of like isometric holding strength yeah, all that stuff yeah, yeah. so if you look at different sports like like a soccer player for example i'd understand because there's they're running like 11 12 kilometers i don't know how many miles but they're, they're running <laughs> a lot per game you know and it's like it, i can see how it can take a toll on your body yeah, yeah but as sure. a grappler <coughs> I, I, th- I still think i'm far from my prime you yeah, know yeah <coughs> and then being in that room man just the skills keep they keep like it never stops yeah you never yeah. stop getting better in that room yeah. that's something like i always surprised me i was like yeah that this this is something i know this was something i do and then like why would i change it but then yeah. you come in like oh shit this is a million times better let me start <laughs> let me start doing that thing yep um but <coughs> yeah it can be it's 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 a humbling thing it's it, it can be a curse if I try to like keep up the intensity and the volume with you guys, but it's also cool for me. I'm not saying I have a different role. Like I, I still feel like um, you guys come in, you're super good, disciplined, mature. I feel like all the the kids coming in, super mature, man. I feel that comes from 
from you guys having this this goal you know what yeah. i mean of like i think it's from seeing guys like you you know that have been in the game it's oh, like shit, man, man it's like you know you guys like you guys laid a foundation now it's like the next generation gets to come through and have like a bit a bit more of a foundation than what you had and then mm -hmm. like the next generation after us will have even more foundation you know what i mean so it's yeah like, i think it's just like players you know i appreciate that man i don't want to make it sound like i'm retiring or i'm on the way out or anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i'm not retiring guys i'm still in the game man i'm only getting started okay i can't i can't quit at zero and three okay i can't quit at zero and three but i also definitely appreciate being able to like help like if, if someone comes in like yeah, lower yeah. level I, I really like the fact that i can come in and then like help speed up the process for some of the guys that come in yeah yeah for with sure. little details because john can only can only i mean even with teaching four or five times a he can only show so much right you know right. there are things he, he hasn't gone over in a long time there are things that i learned from them very early on in training and that they they go over but very rarely like, yeah, yeah there's some yeah. shit john will show once and like it's like once never in a again. blue yeah, yeah. you probably yeah. will never see it again yep. so those are the things like especially in the leg lock department i'll try to like bring you guys up to speed with and i feel like it'll make a big difference because like you know when the team split last year do, some of those guys that were on the team had access to it yeah yeah right <coughs> so it, it's cool for me to be able to like give it back so i, I like the role that i have right now it's like Okay, guys, look up to me. I also look up to, to them. You know what I mean? And, and I sure, find it sure. find it super cool, man. It's a great place to be. No other place I'd rather be. So right now, do you miss home? Like, do you look forward to going back home, visiting, or uh, are you, you like know, it's yeah. I, I obviously like it's it's nice to see all those people and stuff back home for sure. So like, anytime I come home for the holidays and stuff, it's always nice. Mm. But man, dude, I mean, like, I th I think everyone understands, like, you know, like. I think the reason that my girlfriend moved out here with me was because she knows that like, I, I know what I want to do, you know, and mm. every, everybody back home, they, they understand what I'm trying to do. Mm. Everybody gets it. You know, they're, they're all on the same page as me. Yeah. Um, for the most part, anyways, I think that there might be a couple people back home that still don't understand. Haters? Do you have any haters back home? No, I don't have any haters, but you know, just, just may, maybe a couple family members that are just confused, you know. <clears throat> confused huh you know yeah you gotta yeah. be careful just like that. man dude moved to austin texas you know what's he doing out there you know did, did away they, from everybody you know they yeah, gave you yeah. trouble for like because you, you're probably not going to uh, not going I, to like uh college you guys have college at, yeah, at that age yeah you yeah go to college. yeah I, I mean i could go to college but yeah what, like yeah it's like i've heard that plenty of times too like why aren't you going to college stuff like that it's yeah. like it's like oh i'm gonna go do this they're like it's just not the route that everybody takes so i feel like yeah it's it's not necessarily like like that's something I, I always like i i naturally felt like oh everybody's going there wait let me let me think of the other way like that, yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah. that sounds more interesting to yeah, me yeah, like the yeah. unknown you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah so if you weren't doing grappling and you went to college what would you be doing if i went to college yeah man i have no idea i would be screwed <laughs> you really you didn't have like either. something in mind that you wanted to do like if, if you had to go like you just know like like job or something you like i mean of, uh, i mean cook i mean i feel chef, like I, <laughs> soul food chef <laughs> oh man bro I would, I would be so such a bad chef I, everybody would get food poisoning we'd all die you know <laughs> like less people to compete against <laughs> right? there you go there you hire go. him at your events uh christos next That's enigma right. he's gonna <laughs> and make it seafood seafood <laughs> sushi <laughs> feed everyone Dude. sushi raw raw it'll, fish it'll be it'll be so burnt that everyone nobody will touch it just the smell alone will just like make people pass out you know perfect or it'll be undercooked and everybody will die when they eat it so <laughs> <laughs> so but nothing you just go try to get prerequisites done and, and then I, figure it out on yeah. the fly. i mean i i feel like i kind of just started so young you know it's like like man it's like whenever i think about it it's like man whenever i was younger i i like to like wrestle with my siblings and stuff like that yeah it's about it man you never had yeah. like something else that you wanted to do or like did you do any um, other sports growing up i think or? yeah I, so when i was growing up I, I did like football but it was like something that like i was just kind of put it just testing stuff out when i was a kid you know and it was like it was fun but it was never something i like really enjoyed you know it's like it, it is what it is you know get flattened out by like a big dude a couple times it's not fun yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, so, yeah they probably put you what is the name of the guy that kicks the ball like at the beginning i think it's just a kicker the kicker yeah, <laughs> yeah the kicker the kicker you just kick football it. is interesting yeah. oh dude, you guys kick the, the ball kick. once <laughs> like maybe twice per game and you yeah. call it football <laughs> listen I li all right and then you guys want to change the name of the actual football that's fair enough no that's man 
What do you I guys, disagree. What do you guys call America, American football? That's um, what it's called. I would call it throw ball. If I had to <laughs> rename it, <laughs> throw I'd ball. call it throw ball. You're throw throwing ball. the ball. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. You know, right? I mean, or yeah. you're throwing it. Or from here on, anytime I talk to anybody who's not from America, I'm just going to call it throw ball. Let's now. do it, man. Yeah. Let's let's set yeah, that. Let's set that. Uh, let's set that. Um, We're gonna be the start of throw ball. Throw ball. Yeah. We'll have our own throw ball league. Enigma TV. Oh, <laughs> catch it Shout on Shout out to Enigma TV. TV throw <laughs> ball. <right. laughs> throw ball playoffs. <laughs> Get some. Okay, so you, me, honestly, if, if I wasn't doing grappling, well, bef- I went to college. I didn't finish college. I okay. like. What did you went, go to college for? Um, so the first year, like I said, I was, I was in, like, not before college is like, we have like this thing between high school and college, like two years, but basically mm-hmm. would be the same thing for okay. you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I did it in like, in like business and things like that. So I had to do a year of prerequisites because mm-hmm. I wanted to become a physiotherapist because it was related to sports. Oh, okay. I Anytime see. I, I get see. injured in soccer, I'd go to yeah. a physio and then he'd fix me and be like, wow, this is magic. <laughs> I want to learn that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. this is why I was like super down to, to end up doing um, like physiotherapy. But the, like a year in, I had to do kinesiology because my grades were so shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I was a terrible like, student because yeah. I would skip class, go train, go lift, yeah, yeah, go do yeah. this, go do that. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, when I, when I was doing kinesiology, I was like, Gordon started coming in. He came in once, he came in the second time. I was like, bro, I'm going to drop one class here, one class there. You didn't even have to waste the time, man. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. No, yeah. I think is if you know what you want and yeah. then you kind of believe in it and then you kind of set yourself up the way you did. Yeah. There's no one way, man. Like people that, that are, are telling you to, to go to college, obviously there's an underlying emotion, which is like worry. I think they're yeah, worried. Yeah, for sure. They just you know don't. I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think that's the same reason that those same family members like – didn't want me to move to Texas, you know, far away from them. If something happens, they can't do anything about it, you mm-hmm. know? So it's like, I, I understand it. Yeah. It's, it, you can't take it as like, you can't be like upset at those people. You I think not. you just have to be like, okay, well I, it's understandable why you feel this way, mm-hmm. but I'm still going to go do this. You yeah. Know? Cause it's family. Like at the end of the day, they want to see you do good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. they, I don't think it's necessarily going to be jealousy, like, or, or envy or yeah. whatever. I think it's more like, Hey man, I'm worried this, this guy first time moving out. It's crazy, yeah. man. Yeah. It really is. Cause me, like, honestly, I, even when I was leaving the house, it doesn't happen like like one time I just moved out. Yeah, yeah. You know, the first time I stayed away from the house for a long period of time, it was when I went to New York and it wasn't even Hens. It was like, it was blue belt. I didn't even know like about John or anything. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I went to Marcel's. I did like a two, two month, two month camp, oh, two nice. month or one month. It wasn't long, man. It was one month. Really? And then at yeah. the end, I'm like, Oh my God, I want to go back home. I miss my family. I miss my bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I miss everything. Yeah, yeah, Some people yeah. can't, can like, yeah. I know people from Montreal also like <clears throat> they, they, they come in, they can't wait to leave. And that took me a while actually to like, it took me a while to get over that. Um, Oh, I want to go back home kind of feeling. Yeah. You just yeah. didn't have that. I think, I think as a kid, I don't know what age the switch happened, but like, dude, when I was a kid, I'm telling you, and I was like the biggest like baby ever. Like I would cry about everything. I would whine about everything, dude. And I think it was just You're my, still old, a baby, man. With the less, yeah, the less crying and whining, you know, yeah, yeah. now it's more just doing. Like, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, but no, I think my, I think it was probably my older brother just constantly just like being like, man, why are you afraid? It's just, just go do it. Sick. Uh, so yeah, I think at some point, like, um, I was just like, ah, oh, yeah, maybe he's right. So now I'm just like the complete opposite of what I was as a kid. You know, Good, I, I like, like to go do things. I'm adventurous, stuff like yeah. that. Um, so yeah, man, I, I don't know what the switch was, but yeah, at some point I was just like, yeah, oh, yeah, maybe I'll just stop being scared of everything and just go try stuff. So That's yeah. Amazing. And then like, of course, you know, I like miss family, but I, I call them stuff like that. You know, it's 21st yeah. century. I don't got to write a letter and then write a letter mm. back. You know, it's, it's not too hard <laughs> to get in touch with. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. No, that's yeah. cool, man. That's cool that you're able to. But it's also, <clears throat> in a way, <coughs> I feel like, what, you're like two states away from Texas? Yeah, yeah. It's not too bad. Take a it's flight, like, yeah, what, 20-minute yeah. flight from... No, it's, it's like yeah, it's, it's not too bad. I think it's like two-hour flight. So it's, it's, mm. it's really not even that yeah. bad, honestly. And like most of the time, most of the time if I go back, like I go back, I'll fly back or whatever. Yeah. Um, occasionally, I'll drive. But uh, that's try, crazy, try, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, then... Yeah, like then it started becoming like it went from one month to three months, and then when I'd come back home, I'd really see a difference in my game. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I feel like I've matured, yeah, that, and like yeah. I, 
Like when you went back home after when you went to Christmas after a couple of months, you yeah. just smashed everyone, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. It's it, that's that's kind of the weird thing, right? It's like you have you have like after yeah, once you like train and you see the big like skill difference of you now than mm-hmm. you like two months ago even. It's like man, it's like if it's like you have a, you start to get that like FOMO, you know, it's yeah. just like, man, like you, you're home and you're just like, man, you're just thinking about what they're doing in the gym yeah. while you're gone. It's like, man, you're going to come back. Cause you know, those guys are going to be hitting that stuff on you when you come back. Cause you weren't there for it. That's so. why first thing I do when I miss class is I go up to you. Hey, Amen. And what, what do we go over today? <laughs> what do we go over today? And then when yeah, we yeah, go yeah. to session now, yeah, yeah. what do we, well, you kind of told me, so yeah. I kind of know. But no, nah, man, f- it's, it's good to have that fear of missing out. But it's yeah. also nice to have confidence in your, in your teammates and yeah, know that yeah. they'll bring you up to speed. You know, they'll, they'll sure, let you sure. know what we did or they're going to catch you with it. And then you're just going to have to like ask them about it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah. Maurice, sure. Maurice, Maurice. So I don't want to be a bad influence. Mm-hmm. I know we're training in about 20 minutes. OK, probably um, yeah, yeah. before we wrap it up, I'm going to ask for some wisdom from 20 year old Reese. So. Like, did you have any, like, regrets or something you would have liked to change or do differently or something about you you'd like to adjust um, that sometimes you're like, fuck, I should have done this differently. I should have switched that. I should have done that. Like, what advice would you give yourself, like, let's say, if you, like, three years ago or, like, or whatever? Yeah, man. Um, man, a couple of years ago, I, I think, honestly, the advice... Yourself? Man, maybe honestly, probably just like I, I don't know. It's it's kind of hard. Probably come down here like as soon as you guys came to Texas, I should have just been like just came down here sooner, you know. So come down here faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We 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 did it. Yeah, but uh, no, nah, man. Maybe just like you know, eat more food. Since I don't don't like you know, stay small. Got to get big, man. Got to get big. But for what? For your weight class, you're pretty good, though, no? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still, I'm like, I'm like 150, but if the, if the weight class is 145, there's, there's some big dudes. Cut. So eat more, eat yeah, more, eat try more. to get more yeah, jacked. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I think if I'd done that earlier, it probably would have been easier. I think that's probably the biggest thing is that I probably should have focused on. Yeah, You yeah. didn't put enough time in the gym. That's what you're saying to yourself. That's right. But I think it's that's not too right. late for you. It's just the no, amount no, of no. cardio yeah, you yeah, do, for the sure. amount of cardio we're doing. It's, it's hard. Yeah. It's going to yeah, be hard for you to put a mask That's what I'm saying. If I would have done it sooner, started it sooner, at least it probably would have been. Just a bit easier, but it's not that bad. You yeah, know? I yeah. mean, it's not that bad. I think I think you still get around it personally um, because we had like off season and in, in soccer. I would. This is something actually I, I feel like it's important to start talking about in jiu-jitsu, like an off season. An off season, yeah, like, bro. Yeah. Like this is when I would hit the gym and I would spend. And back then it was those shitty phones, like the older phones. You know, we didn't have like smartphones yet. And then nobody would be able to contact me because the gym was in the basement. I spent my whole summer basement drinking oh. protein shakes, lifting weights. <laughs> but honestly, dude, you're not a weightlifter. You're a jiu-jitsu guy. Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like if you can keep your body safe, that's priority number one. For like, sure. Do for a sure. little bit of mobility maybe at some point. You know, loosen up those hips. Yeah. <laughs> Shake dude, them what hips. are you talking about? Shake it. That's it. Just yeah. upper body rotation. Yeah. Um, staying safe. Putting mass is good, but I think as you – get older yeah that's yeah. gonna it will it'll start to become more natural yeah, also sure. like yeah it's important to lift and everything but like john says what's gonna win you matches is your skills for sure for that's sure. your skills again we're not weightlifters, you know yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah and then you can you can you'd be surprised man you can get hurt like lifting, lifting a lot yeah, lifting yeah. the wrong the wrong way um my personal trainer guy will have him on the podcast sometimes this guy will demystify all the bro science that you hear left and right do this that way do this that and then and so <clears throat> honestly i think i think it, okay maybe yeah you could have put a couple of pounds on but i don't think that's that bad of a yeah yeah that yeah, bad of, sure. a, of a mistake i don't think it's <clears throat> it's gonna set you back that much yeah, and then if yeah. anything you can worry about that like later on in your career life I'm for sure. about. maurice thank you so much for yeah, for being on the episode do you want to thank anyone obviously we talked about your sponsor yeah man perfectus yeah. perfectus where can, yeah, they, yeah, buy, can yeah. they buy gear? Is uh, yeah. there like a promo code? Uh, so we're actually, they're actually just getting a website set up like here recently that they're just got, we're going to have stuff like set up. So they're still getting it set up. Like I said, you know, still newer brand, Six. still getting stuff set up. But, uh, but yeah, man, they'll, they'll have a website up. I'll probably post some stuff on my, on my IG, IG. stuff like that. Yep. I E G. But yeah, for people sure. can get to you. Uh, Reese, Reese is your, is your, Reese IG? is BJ. It's just look Reese. up Reese Lefevre. You know, you'll find it. The French, 
The Tennessee Frenchman. The fake French. Oh, maybe Tennessee that's a good nickname. Tennessee Frenchman. Ooh, Tennessee. That's, change it. That's not bad. Oh, yeah. The yeah. Tennessee Frenchman BJJ. Whatever you, you want. Yeah. Whatever you want. We'll leave it. We'll leave it in the description or something. That's you guys right. can follow right. up. You guys yeah, can yeah. link up. With, with, if you're yeah. in Tennessee and you're hearing this, the pride of Tennessee right here. <laughs> Please. Um, guys, thank you for, for um, tuning in, obviously. Um, we're going to keep having teammates on. I love having this. I got I didn't. There's a lot of shit I didn't know about you. Now I know about you. That's right. That's right yeah. And we'll keep doing this. Reese, thank you so much. And yeah, now thank let's you, go to training. For sure.